a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montreger interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back once again, 7 o'clock Sunday night, back for another edition of Rock the Stage Show. And let me tell you, you are in for a treat tonight. You know, medical setbacks are never fun. If you know some of my story, you know that's true. But sometimes some people seem to get hit more than others. They have their medical setbacks and then more and more. Tonight, I have a special guest who has survived cancer, numerous setbacks, and 51 medical appearances at last count. Now, that's operations, by the way, 51 medical operations. However, he still lives with gratitude and works to inspire and serve others, particularly sick children. I promise you, this is going to be an extra special edition of Rock the Stage Show tonight as we get into how to turn pain into purpose and purpose into passion. But first, we want to thank our sponsors once again to make this all possible. Out of Vida Studios, of course. Out of Vida is helping to take your audio po- audiobooks, your podcasts, and turning them to stronger, amplified material. They take your material to the market faster, stronger. They're connecting your voice to the world. And for more information, go to Out of Vida. Com. And, of course, our newest one is Suspiciously Convenient Productions. If you have an idea for a TV show, for a movie, they're actually a movie production company based out of Canada. Thank you again, Suspiciously Convenient Productions. Be a part of Rock the Stage. All right, we thank your sponsors. We've set you up for a great teaser. Now you're in for a wonderful, wonderful show tonight. Manny is the chief memory maker of Ferrari Kit a nonprofit that makes kids coping with cancer a celebrity for the day, as well as a speaker, author, and coach that helps individuals and create breakthrough moments so they can live their best life. Let's welcome the Ferrari kid man himself. Here's Manny. Hi, Rich. How are you? I'm so grateful to be here. Manny, this is a thrill. I have seriously, we've been trying to get this show locked in for a while and the reason we couldn't get this done is you had a gala, your 11th gala, right? Yes, sir. We had the 11th gala with over 600 guests. It was nuts. <laughs> so what was that like? 11 years of celebrating all that you do to help and support kids. What was that like, the atmosphere and everything? Well, um, it, it's incredible, even though every year I tell myself this is my last one. I'm retiring after this one. I keep telling myself that because it is an undertaking to put 600 people in a room and keep them entertained and raise money for the charity and what have you. But um, it's truly at the end of labor of love. It was an unbelievable day, uh, unbelievable evening of people like minded that want to make a difference with kids in the community come together. And it, it was a lot of fun. Well, I will confess I'm a Ferrari nut, and I'm still a kid at heart. So do I qualify? <laughs> well, you, you have a special connection here with me, so I think we can put you in the car and give you a ride without that other stuff, you know, because you've had your own chair of medical. I'm sure you more than qualify. <laughs> I, I grew up watching Magnum P.I., so it's yeah. – no. But you have an amazing story yourself. So let's, let's dig into your background because, again, like I said in the opening – 51 operations at last count? Hopefully no more, right? Yeah, well, I'm actually, I should have updated that. I'm at 60 right now, and um, it's it's been a, a t- tough. I just, sometimes I just forget to add that to my, you know, um, media stuff. I just don't update it anymore. I get lost in it. I don't like it, but it's also being truthful with others saying I'm at 60 now. It's, it's a pain every year. I seem to go in for something, but I'm here with you and having a good time, so I'm super grateful. Tell us back how did it all began and what was it like to to be that guy well oddly enough you mentioned magnum pi and it started with his car so um i was a teenager and they were doing so many operations on my leg they i was getting infections they thought we better amputate his leg or he's going to get an infection to kill him And Michael Jackson's doctor in Los Angeles was so fascinated that I was still alive like every other weekend. They're like, man, he's not going to make it through the weekend. Get your preacher, your 
priest, your spiritual leader come in. He's not going to, and my little body kept fighting. So Michael Jackson's doctor was fascinated and said, hey, what if I did plastic surgery on his leg? Let me take a look at it, see if I can save it. When I went to Los Angeles and got out of the airport, there was Magnum P.I.'s um, Ferrari. And I have that, I had that picture on my website forever. I still have the picture of me standing next to that car. And I remember asking the guy if I can take a picture next to his car, not knowing anything about this car. I've never seen a car so amazing in my life. And he goes, man, you're smiling ear to ear like you ate a banana sideways. I, I wish I had time to give you a ride. And 25 years later, you know, as God would have it, I give kids coping with cancer rides in Ferraris and create epic over the top days for them. Drop the mic right there. Let me tell you, that's a great story. And so having gone through everything you've gone through, you naturally have the empathy, the understanding. You, you've got to be these kids' best friend once you hear their story and sit down and connect with them, aren't you? I am. We we are. We have a. I have a hope tank, which is our monthly support group. So once they go through their epic day with red carpet and paparazzi, and you know, for example, we have a shopping spree coming up. Where we have bodyguards with earpieces for the girls, and they walk around with bodyguard service. And um, once that day's over, we have a monthly support group called the Hope Tank, where we continue to encourage them during their journey. And of course, we become best friends and family. But the reason for the Hope Tank, it's it's one thing. I'll be 55 this year to tell a 16 year old girl, remember when I was bald, I understand what you're going through. It's another thing when she has a friend that's the same age going through something similar and I can connect them. So it becomes a monthly family reunion every month. It's terrific. I love how we phrase your introduction that you help create breakthrough moments and going through what I went through. I'm curious. My imagination was a big part. My imagination, my faith was my big part of getting through those bumps. And there were breakthrough moments that either I thought of, I dreamed of, or did happen. Did that happen for you personally with your own jury? Were, were those breakthrough moments? And is that why you kind of realize I can do more? Yeah, I, you have those moments where you, you start counting inventory of the things that you're grateful for. And then your mind starts to shift and say, OK, it's not what happens to me. It's what I truly want to do about it. And there's so many of us speakers in the world that we've gone through something and we've turned that pain into purpose but it, it's kind of like sometimes we fight that i know that as a speaker business author and coach that for the long time when i was on stage with some of the greats i was caught up in wanting to be famous and all that stuff and i just kind of suppressed my calling and then eventually it's like okay god's going to take a two by four but till i get it and and say hey listen this is what you were born to do and meant to do and sure enough, 11 years now doing the Fur Kid. Now this year will be our 12th year. Um, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and still get to speak and and make these kids rock stars and stuff. It's it's so much fun. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I grew up with a stutter and I was like, I want to speak. I want to speak. And finally, it was almost like in the middle of the night, it says, just go speak. And it was so relieving to have this internal voice say, just go do it. Was, was, was that kind of a, a liberating thing for you too to say, yeah, I've gone through this, I've gone through that, but just go do it? Yeah, it, it's kind of, it, it, it was also fear-based for me where I, I made a decision. I think our good friend Les Brown once said, you can box and bury your dreams or you can box and bury your fears. And so I made the decision that I'm just tired of being fear-based and I want to be faith-based. And that was a very powerful state. You can't be in both states at once. So it was very liberating when you finally said, despite the fear, despite that I, I don't know how to put this all together, I'm, I'm going to figure it out and God will introduce me to the right people and the right pieces will come together. And I trusted that process. You know, I know you focus on the kids, but being a parent of a child going through that, I mean, you talk about letting the fear go, overcoming the fear, stepping into it. What's it like to watch a parent's faces when you start leaning into your story, sharing it and it connects with everyone in the room? What's it like for the parent? Yeah, it, it fills their hope tank because when they hear my story and the struggle that I went through and the odds that I had against me, they they say, okay, if that happened that long ago and we've gotten so much better, they get very hopeful 
and and what they hope their child goes through will end. So and and you know it's funny because we used to do the hope tank events where the parents would just drop off the kids and I would say goodbye because you know um, they're very protective. They hover over them and we go bowling and they trip or fall. They're like, oh my god! I'm like, just bring band aids. Who cares? They let them be kids, right? But what happened is the parents were starting to talk. And I realized as much as the kids need each other, the parents needed each other. So I got to facilitate hope for not only the children, but for the parents. So it's been very moving to be able to be the catalyst that helps lead that ship. Well, and again, that's a powerful thing because when one's down, someone else is up and you switch places in the roller coaster that you go through all this. So to be that catalyst of hope, to fuel that tank, that's really a powerful thing, Manny. Do, 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 do you and your team realize how much you're really doing for people? I I, I have to sometimes step back because I, I do forget how much we do. I, I get so caught up in doing the things I love with these kids. I don't reflect backwards very often, but then someone will ask a question. Well, how many families have you taken care of? And I'm like, oh, 2,500. And they're like, you say that like it's nothing, Manny. <laughs> like, 2,500 families, because we take care of the kid that's sick plus their siblings. When I was going through my cancer, my sister was left out. So, um, and of course that created distance and she started acting out for attention. So I wanted to make sure if I'm gonna put the siblings in the Ferraris, I'm gonna include them in the fun events that we do and that we do this as a family. So I don't realize till someone says something and I look backwards, just how far we've gone. Dad, one of my, keynote talks is on caregiving because of my liver transplant, the failure, my older brother became my caregiver. And that bond that we had as brothers only got tighter through the caregiving. And people don't always realize it is the family. Yes, there's the pain, the angst of the child or the person, but it's it's important to bring them into everything, isn't it? It's a, the, the holistic way of family healing hurting, cheering each other on, and being recognized. Yeah, because at the end of the day, when we have, for example, we just had our Christmas party, and I had gifts for each of the Ferrari kids, right? Well, how would you feel as a sibling if you're just in the corner watching everybody else have fun and, and unwrapping presents? So I'm like, no, no, there's toys for everybody. I got toys for everyone. So, you know, yes, they need to be included. And um, because so many times um, they do feel left out and someone's getting attention you know, I was getting all the attention, not because I wanted it, because I was just super sick, Yeah. you know, and going through two years of chemo and radiation, I was just fragile. So, of course, I naturally got it. So we're very um, intentional about including the entire family in the event and every sibling um, gets to, you know, participate. So we've talked about the, uh, the Ferrari kids. I want to dive into what is a Ferrari kid, because Ferrari kids are getting rock star treatment and they're leaving cancer and chronic illness in the dust. I love your catchphrase. I love the Ferrari flying on the banner of your website. But you're really about the kids. What What is a Ferrari kid and what really is this amazing process you go through with them? Yeah, so we, we have a process where someone simply, if there's a kid that, well, first of all, I should tell you, it used to be just kids coping with cancer because I'm a cancer survivor, but we've taken care of so many kids with cancer in the city, and we've so well known and respected that people would call us and say, hey, my kid's autistic or has special needs or has diabetes. Do they qualify? And if you know me, I'm like, Oprah, the answer is yes. Everybody gets a Ferrari. You know, everybody gets a ride. Everybody gets an experience. So what happens is they get nominated on our website and we select a day for them to have their epic day with red carpet and paparazzi and people asking for their autographs and all that. And once they do that, they're a Ferrari kid. And then every time we do events, we invite the furry kids, like when we run out movie theaters or we go bowling as groups and stuff. So that's really what a furry kid, it's a kid that was struggling, that was, it's entered our program and now is part of the furry kid family. So like you mentioned, you, 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 you have bodyguards, you have paparazzi. Is, is that local media involved? Is, is these volunteers? Who's this entourage and where, where do you find them? Yeah, so during the year, I network a lot, you know, because I'm still a speaker and a coach. So I'm always networking and what have you. And I'll see someone that's seven foot tall, six, eight. I'm like, man, you need to volunteer at my event and be a bodyguard. I have an earpiece I can put on you. And once they found out what we do, they're like, we're all in. So 
they show up and like men in black just all decked out like all stern and helping the kids get out of the ferraris walk through the mall with them and the, and the entire mall is like oh my gosh what's going on is disney here what's going who are these kids that got bodyguard service it's you so got the guys fun. grabbing the earpiece leaning around pointing they over do. there freaking people we out. have fun i let i tell them start talking just whatever say something i do i said let's milk this thing and you, we do get lots of press the media that's one of our signature events we do every march yeah. so we do make the news sometimes and um we haven't been on there in a while so it's probably i need to do some more press releases and stuff but we always do a request for coverage for that particular day and um and just people who've been with us for so long they know what we do what needs to get done and sometimes it's simple as just coming with a sign that says cancer sucks and you rock and and loving on that child so everybody that wants to volunteer gets an opportunity to help in whatever way they can. So for those watching tonight, again, I said it's very special soil. There, there are a lot of people dealing with 2023 was not an easy year. We come out of COVID. We're all dealing with something right now. And a lot of people have lost businesses, lost dreams. So how are we supposed to turn that pain into purpose, Manny? What would be some tips for us? Well, a couple of things is almost like what I was said earlier. You can be in one of two states, either a fear-based state or a faith-based state. Fear is when you are dealing with anger in, in negative emotions. And, and of course, faith is when you're gratitude and, the, and grateful in those emotions. So one is to really have a mental shift to saying, how do I get to a faith-based state. And that for me starts with my morning routine, which is I wake up grateful. I'm motivated by, Rich, two things. It's um, purpose, living my purpose, and contribution to my city. So um, if if there was a superpower, gratitude is one of mine because I am grateful. I'm, I'm driving my car. God, thank you for the green light. You know, I'm <laughs> grateful for this, grateful for that. And I think when you start seeing things as blessings, that, that things work for you, and not against you, then you have a transition in your mind that says, um, okay, I think things can be better. I think I can figure this out. And there's people to encourage you. So I start with a morning routine and it, I read my goals. I remind myself of my purpose and I stay in a very faith-based state because the minute you're out of the house and the phone rings or the world happens or you're stuck in traffic, I know it's very easy to go into the other state. So I want to start there and just remind myself to stay there throughout the day. Again, setting the day off. I've, I've always found yes. very saying setting off with intention helps me stay there because once you get off in the weeds, it's right. always harder to get back in there, right? It is. And so you got to surround yourself with the right people, the right team, people who are going to encourage you. You know, I've got friends that if I'm having a bad day, I know who I can call that are going to speak life into my existence speak life into my situation so i think those things are so important but i think just simply the way you start your day sets so much of the tone and and the other thing is um a lot of times people ask well i'm not sure what my purpose is i i'm like well figure out what your talent is because sometimes we find our purpose in our talent and that's to encourage others to inspire others to serve food to others whatever that talent that you have sometimes using that talent it it becomes your purpose and you can usually find that talent by, A, what jacks you up, what gets you thrilled and excited, yes. and also the reaction of other people. Because when they see you shine in your area of expertise, whether you know it or not, the head's turn. People pause, and they'll tell you, you're good at this. Yes. Yep. That's very true. And and, and people are, I mean, even, I mean, we're in football season right now, and um I, you can see players on the field, like they were, the old Deion Sanders in place. They were just so naturally gifted on the field. It's yes. like it's almost like they were born to do that. It's almost like you you don't think they put any effort, even though they do. They make it look effortless. And I think some so true of our talent. Sometimes if um, people can look at our talent and say, "Wow, that's amazing that you can do that," and and um, and they acknowledge that gift that you have, and then we can take that gift to serving other people. It's a really beautiful life. Now, I've, I've been fortunate to meet with a lot of people that are faced with chronic challenges, disabilities, but it's so fun to sit with someone that, that has that big time struggle and they turn around and go, but my purpose is blank. And they have found something that they can attribute, they can do despite their circumstances. What's that like when you were, work with the Ferrari kids and they had that light bulb moment of my purpose is this? What's that like? 
Yeah, it's super rewarding. It's very, it's a very tearful. It's when you see that their little engines are not talking about giving up or giving in, but they're focused on, okay, what can I do to be better? What can I do to use this to serve me in some way? And they don't become victims of their story, but they end up trying over their stories. They become victors over their stories. And there, there, there's something about that grabs other people, that they hear them become the hero instead of the victim right in the middle of those circumstances. Other people stand up and applaud. Other people realize this is something extra special. And just to be in around that takes me to a higher level myself. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes I tell the kids not to be so hard on themselves because we do have bad days and bad moments. Medicine yeah. can be very cruel. So sometimes I have to set expectations saying, hey, sometimes getting out of bed is a victory. So don't worry about what you got to do today. Just getting out of bed is a victory. Taking a shower is a victory. Going outside the house and getting 20, 30 minutes of sun is a victory. So it's just moving that body and getting things done a little bit at a time and not thinking that they have to be at the mountaintop overnight, that it's going to take a little bit while. Sometimes we have set setbacks, but again, just getting up sometimes and moving one inch closer to that goal is a victory. So I'm curious, with all the inspiration around you and how you inspire everybody, what inspires Manny? Um, I'm inspired by a couple things. Um, definitely my family. I'm a family man. So my fiance and I have nine kids. And um, so Whoa, we have- wait, 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 nine her, kids? Yes, yeah, so I said, I, if we have one more, we can have a basketball team, you know? But, but, so um, I'm inspired by family for sure. That, you know, um, that my kids, my family motivate me to perform at my best on a daily basis. Um, my, I, I also think it's a responsibility. What inspires me is that God gave me this gift and I want to use it to the best of my potential. So I'm inspired by the gifting that God's called me to do. And that's super important to me because um, I know a lot of kids that have not made it. We've had to bury 28 children in 11 years. And I know growing up, a lot of friends that I lost to this thing called the big C cancer. Mm -hmm. So I don't take for granted my journey and that I'm speaking to you today and that I woke up this morning. So I'm very inspired by my purpose that I feel God is has on me to go so, serve those that are suffering. Now, I can understand how you got from where you're at with your story into Ferrari kid and champion the kid. But how do you fall in the coaching of all things? Well, you know, oddly enough, when I was a teenager, um, I was fascinated by personal development. So really what I did is I started following some of the greatest speakers at that time. Like, for example, Zig Ziglar, who did the forward to my first book. Zig became like a dad to me. I came to Christ because of Zig. Actually, him and his son, son Tom are great friends of mine. And um he said, you know, if you're really serious about this, you ought to join the National Speakers Association. And I started looking at Jim Cathart and Tony Alexandra and some of the greats, you know, Patricia Fripp and all these amazing speakers at NSA. And yeah. I was a member of NSA for 25 years. So I would go to all the conferences. I built a beautiful speaking business. Um, and then they started saying, well, sometimes people want to take you home through products. So I developed some products and they want you to coach them. So I developed coaching and we all the speakers, you know, we all created different revenue models for ourselves. And I wanted to add coaching because simply I was going in for my third hip replacement. And I'm like, I don't think I can do 50 to hundred airplanes a year anymore. I need yeah. to slow down. So let me start coaching, adding that to my business so I can speak for a limited number of dates and then I can coach like I'm on the, you know, right here on this with you. I can coach over the phone or on a Zoom or on some conference. And I added coaching. And then during that time is when I started getting a tugging for, OK, th there's success and there's significance. Right. And then there's legacy. We talk about this at NSA. So how do I go from success to significance? And I'm like, man, I remember that guy um, wanted to give me a ride in a Ferrari, but I never you know, I, I just it's in the back of my mind, but I've never done. I keep saying I'm going to do something like put kids in Ferraris and give them epic days, take them to chemotherapy, do all this. But I just kept talking about it. And finally, one day I did it. So my journey actually started as a speaker and coach and then later transitioned into uh -huh. the chief me memory maker at Ferrari Kid, where I still do speaking and coaching. But the Ferrari Kid is, 
my number one passion in life of, of living out my purpose. Interesting how that all we again, the, the list of people that you rattle off as a fellow NSA, or I know Cathcart very well, and some of those names you rattle Great off. Man. Yeah, you know, amazing, wonderful people. And again, people like Jim Cathcart, we sit around at NSA and we do ask this question. And I'm curious, what's your legacy that you want to leave behind? Yeah. And so to me, I, I want the furry kid to outgrow as fast as possible and as much as it can. And that my legacy to the community will be known to my children in the community is that I've taken care of more sick kids in the community than anybody on the planet. So I, I want my legacy to continue. If I passed away tomorrow morning, I would want the furry kid of this organization to take care of as many sick kids as possible year in and year out. And, and you know, till God calls us all home. So. Well, and, you know, you would talk about Zig Ziglar and Tom and Zig, before he passed away, handed the baton to Tom and yeah. Tom continued to keep it and keep it going. So your, your heart's in the same alignment of regardless of where Manny ends up, you want this to thrive, continue having a purpose, right? Yeah, I was there at his funeral. I was sitting next to Les Brown when Zig, I remember the first time Zig asked me to Preston Wood Church. He says, Manny, we have a little Bible study. I just want you to come attend. And his little Bible study is 300 people. <laughs> so anyway, I went up there a couple of times. And then when he passed away, of course, I was there. Les Brown sat next to me and we talked about legacy. We talked about the difference. And I got to see Tom and, and yeah, and I've been up there and a couple times with Tom and he's continued to do the amazing work his father has set, which is what I want my kids to do when I go is hopefully they can, if, if they're inspired and called to do so, if not someone to do that, right. And continue to pick up that torch and keep carrying it. So you finally got to the car. You finally got to do it. You've been to it. 11 galas. You said each year is going to be your last year, but I, I think I have to ask you this question. What's next for Ferrari kit? What's next for what you do? I don't believe you're done. You've got to have something that's next level, next next high profile. You got to have something that's going to wow the kids even bigger, right? Yeah, well, we we want to do a couple things. Well, we want multiple locations. I've done events in Dallas and Austin and Houston, even though we're in San Antonio. So I've done events where eventually I love to have full time locations at those places. Right. That's something to, to work on. Um, and then also. Um, we talked about I had we just had a board retreat and I talked about I want to do a music video with an actual excuse me celebrity like we did um Old Town Road and when Billy Ray Cyrus found out about it he was in Fredericksburg about an hour from us and he asked if the kids that did that video can come up with him and do a meet and greet so we got to do that so I kept saying it'd be cool if we can do a music video I mean, I want these kids when they arrive, they arrive in the middle a limo, they have hair and makeup. They I mean, we treat them like rock stars. So I thought, man, it'd be great if we can tag celebrities and at one point get some celebrity involvement with the furry kid. So whether it's Justin Timberlake, who loves children, especially sick kids, um, that's going to be kind of our next level is how do we think bigger? Wow, my mind's already going. <laughs> yeah. I'm on board with it right there. Boom. We're, we're totally on board to rock the stage with you on that. That is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, like the shopping spree. You know, it, it, it used to be um, we take a half a dozen to a dozen girls to the mall in a Ferrari. We treat them to dinner or lunch, rather, in their family. And then we give them a gift card to go shopping till they drop. And then how do I make that better? Then we said, OK, let's add nails. So we get we get. Um, their lunch done. Then we go get their nails done. And then they go, then I'm like, how can we do it better? Oh, you know, let's add bodyguards. So we started adding bodyguards. And then we got a phone call a couple months ago that Brookfield Properties, who owns one of the major malls here in San Antonio, La Cantera, had 170 events across the country. My shopping spree was rated number one. So I'm like, oh, that was, that made me feel amazing. But I'm still like, how do we make it better? So. Yeah. So that's we're always in search of what we can do to put a smile on it. When you first took your first Ferrari ride, when you first said, I'm going to do this, did you have any idea that it's become what it is? No. Did you ever it, imagine I, I, no, absolutely not. When I was just dreaming, I was in my teens. I went to the fur dealership, took a picture with the car, put it on my goals wall, things like I, I would add little would I know it, it would turn out the way it is. And then we, we, you know, at the end, we, 
it's how we're grounded, right? So we believe that the Ferrari is just a piece of metal. What we do with that piece of metal is give it a soul. And so now we turn that car into something purposeful. So when we drive kids, we take kids to chemo and radiation and their surgeries. It's like a free Uber. They call us and Mr. Manny, I have surgery next Friday. We pick them up at 5 a.m., get them to the hospital by 5.30. And, and we know it's a piece of metal, but that piece of metal, we give it a soul. It provides hope to so many kids that are suffering. What's been the craziest Ferrari kid ride you ever had? What's been something that you did not plan but happened and took it to another level? All right. I'm probably going to get in a little bit of trouble here. But um, one it's, of the things that happened is now. one of the things that happened is I forgot we had a kid in the car and a, par and a Ferrari pulled up to, next to me revving their engine and we started to take off. <laughs> And, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got a kid in the car. I, and so when we got out of the car, the, the little kid tells mom, it's the best ride of my life, mom. We were going like 110. <laughs> and I'm like, my eyes bucked out. We really weren't going 110, but it was like, oh, my gosh. So they, they every furry kid event has its very unique and special memories to it. Um we we lost a furry kid December 10th, Caleb, who's been with me for um, 10 years. Um, I remember when he's in elementary school. I remember taking the furry in high school to do his senior picks in. And I remember when we had a double lung transplant. It took and then it failed him two years later. And I was reflecting on um, all the events. We've done 50 plus events, you know, furry kid events with Caleb and his family. And so sometimes events when something tragic like that happens, those events really come to life. Like that was really an amazing event. I'm so glad that we did it. I'm so glad that, you know, it, despite, cause I still have medical issues that I wasn't feeling that great that I took the car that morning to the, the photo, you know, opportunity. And Caleb was in our, in our old town video, for example. And um, so every event has its own special moment. And then of course, when we lose a child, those events become even more dear, not only to us, but for the families, because I'll get phone calls from the family saying, my God, Manny, we, we've seen the shopping spree video or the main event or the top golf video a thousand times. I have, I, I find, I have a picture of my son and video of my son laughing and, and knowing that he's in a deep, pain or she's in deep pain, they were able to be a kid for the moment and forget about surgery and medical equipment and all that and just have fun. So those memories, you know, become very meaningful to the family. There's something about laughter that when I was going through a mine, I joked and I laughed more. And I, I, I had a nurse come in at one of the actually one of the most critical days of my entire liver failure time. They came in and the nurse says, you're having more fun. You're the most dead man in the entire hospital today but you're having more fun laughing and then she's paused and said we're actually arguing outside on who gets to come visit you in your room because you're too much fun to be around mm. what's it like when that humor comes in and people can laugh sort of at their situation but just laugh and enjoy the day and the time they have what's it like when laughter brings come breaks well, through? I I think laughter is the best medicine. So I, it's it's what I think laughter and music is what combines the world together. So we dance a lot at the furry kid. We laugh a lot at the furry kid. That's the things that we do. I have DJs at events. Which we have superhero parties where we dance with superheroes and stuff. So I think laughter and dancing are very similar in that way. Um, it's encouraging, especially when you take a young person and they, their, their parents are absolutely devastated, yet they see the love and joy and laughter in, in, in that kid's face. And, it, and without knowing it, that kid's instilling hope into their family, into their parents. So it's, it's a very beautiful thing to watch. And it's also, I think sometimes parents forget how resilient and how amazing their children are because they, they see them as a victim on the in the hospital room going in for another street surgery, another round of chemo. But the kid is like, let's get this done. Just, you know, come on, bring it. They're just resilient and amazing. So to watch the kids inspire the parents through laughter, through song, through dancing, through being courageous is wonderful to watch. Manny, I know you do have a special offer. I'm going to bring this up on the screen here, but you're actually willing to meet with people if they're ready for that serious breakthrough. Now, what does that mean? What What is a conversation with Manny like? Well, it, what a conversation with me looks like is I ask you some difficult questions and then I ask that you be completely honest. Because what happens is 
there's a lot of us that are frozen in our tracks with not knowing what to do, what our purpose is, what we want out of life. And we have an opportunity for someone to help us. And we, we're not 100% honest because we're still fearful. Um, our conversation with me is leave the fear behind. Let's talk about possibilities. And if I'm a good fit for you to help you achieve your goals and your dreams, then I'm going to make you an offer kind of like the godfather you can't refuse. You know, one of the things I, I know there's lots of high-end coaching programs in the world. And I just made a decision a long time ago. I, I don't want that. I, I never want money to come in the way of my purpose to God's message to me, to someone else. So it became very reasonable to work with me. And it really is a conversation where I ask you some specific questions. And at the end, if you think I can bless you and help you in this year and make it the best year yet, then I then I want to work together. Again, 210-887-7285. That's the telephone number. Or use email, manny at the ferrarikid.org. It's on the screen here. And write that down and make sure. And while we're talking about cool stuff and how you can learn about Manny and what's going on, here is his website. Hit the QR code, grab your phone, hit it right now. And what are they going to find besides that cool Ferrari card on your website? They'll find a couple of things, right? The, uh, we haven't updated the gala for this year. It's going to be November 2nd, a masquerade ball. So I think that's being worked on in this next two weeks. But they'll, if they know the kid that's sick, you know, coping with cancer or illness of some form, they can nominate the kid, especially in Texas. You know, um, if, if they know the kid outside the state, we can still send a care package or do something to encourage the kid and encourage the parents. So on that website, you'll find some more information about the furry kid. Um, if you or your business wanted to nominate a kid or, or to sponsor one kid or multiple kids through the year, you can do that on the website. So one of the things that makes us different, especially I know we're all over, you know, the world with um, speaking, but um, our donors can be part of the kids day. That makes it very interesting because our, it, what happens is someone will say, oh, it's only $500 to sponsor a kid for the entire year from 24 events they go to. I mean, that's it. And they get to be part of that day with those kids, asking for their autographs, taking pictures, and stealing hope in them. So it, it's really cool. But you can find out a lot about the Ferrari Kid at that website. And I always say, whether it's time, treasure, talent, there's always ways to help out a charity. We need volunteers. We need treasure. We need all those things because um, it takes a village. That's incredible. Hit that QR code. Follow up with Manny on that. We're coming down to the end of our time here with Manny, but uh, again, oh. <laughs> see, it flies so fast, doesn't it? It does. It does. We've had fun. It does fly fast. So, you know, as we talk about the pain, the purpose, you clearly found yours. And you're still, just so people understand, your pain and your medical battles aren't really done, are they? No, unfortunately, um, back in 1976, when I was going through chemo and radiation, it's not like it is today where they know precisely your body weight, gender, this and that, what amount is acceptable. Back then, it was more, I was a guinea pig. They're like, give them more, give them more, give them more, as they're trying to figure out the dialing and figuring out, you know, what comes, um, how much your body can take. So just think I went in a toaster and I came out burnt. And that's what happened, which left all these complications with my bones and um, all the multiple surgeries I've had was just because of an overdose and radiation. But at the end of the day, um, I'm super grateful. I go in for minor surgery every year. It's nothing major. Um, and, I, you know, I have nothing to complain about. I'm a blessed man and I have a great life. Manny Diotti, this has been a pleasure to sit down and finally, finally get to do this. Yes, sir. This will not be the only time we're going to do this, my friend. We are definitely going to have you come on back. And I would love to come down and see one of your big events and be a part of it with you. I would love to just come soak it up and support it any way we can from Rock the Stage. Well, I appreciate it. I'm grateful to be on. Thank you for to you. Thank you for the audience listening. Thank you for everybody who has given their time. And um, I'd love to come back. What's the best way to support you and for our kids in 2024 yeah the best way is to reach out to me and let me know if you're going to be in town and when i'm going to schedule events or to say hey me and my company want to sponsor a child and and um and help us out in that way so you know time treasure talent whatever you have there's always room at the table for us to use that and better the life of a child that's suffering manny yachty great to have you here today thank you very much
Thank you for having me, Rich. Hey, that's going to do it for Rock the Stage this week. Again, I told you it was going to be a special one. We go around the globe. We go international, local, all over the place. The best celebrities, the best stories, and amazing conversation like this. We do it each and every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time with our premiere party. You want to come and join us and be involved with the live chat. Subscribe to our channel and never miss one of our episodes of Rock the Stage. We have more great guests coming up around the corner. We do want to thank our sponsors that make this show possible each and every week. Out of Edo Studios, they are connecting your voice to the world. They're producing your audiobooks and your podcasts. Learn more at autovita.com and Suspiciously Convenient Productions. They're located in Canada, helping you produce your film or TV series. Yeah, they can get it done for you. You want to learn more about that. Hey, I'm the Trigger Rich Bontrager. Thank you for being a part of our show tonight. We'll see you back here 7 p.m. Eastern time for another edition of Rock the Stage Show.